Hi everyone, today I'm gonna to teach you how to break apart a composite volume figure into two separate rectangular prisms. And we're going to learn a little more concretely how that is done. Okay, we're gonna start with our concrete model. I made this using base 10 blocks. And you can see that um, I used 10 rods for the bottom figure and unit cubes for the top figure. So if we were to cut our figure kind of here, we could see, okay, there's a top figure, figure A, we could call it, and a bottom figure, figure B. So I'm gonna go ahead and write my equations for figure A, which I'm gonna say is the top. I can see that it's one, two unit cubes in height. It is three unit cubes in length. And then it's also three unit cubes in width. So if I'm looking at the base of this top figure using unit cubes, it's three times three will give me the base, which is nine. And then times the height, two, will give me 18 unit cubes and that is also units cubed remember that we put an exponent of three because we are multiplying three factors to get our product and it is a 3d figure so a this top figure is 18 units cubed now let's look at the bottom figure figure b i have two layers of 10 rods stacked They extend three back, so the width or the length is three. And then we have 10 here. We know that because it's a 10 rod. So if we're thinking about just the base, it's gonna be 10 times three. The base will give us 30. And then because it has a height of two, our final answer is going to be 60 units cubed. Now, if we're wondering what is the composite volume or the volume of both figures together, we are going to add 18 units cubed plus 60 units cubed. And we will end up with 78 units cubed. That will be our final answer for the composite volume. All right, now that we finished with our concrete, we're gonna move over to our representation of the same problem. This is an image and it shares the same attributes as this concrete example. So you can see that this is four inches, we're saying inches instead of units, four inches in height. This is four unit cubes in height. This has three inches here. This has three units here and so on. So this is going to be, these are the same things except for here, we're representing it with inches, and here we were able to count our unit cubes. So now that we're moving here, these are the figures you guys are going to encounter the most, and you're gonna to have to first decide, do I want to break it up here, or do I want to break it up here? It doesn't usually matter you can do it either way. So we broke up our initial one here. And I want you to think about that we don't have a measurement for just the height of this. But if we know that the whole thing is four inches, we can look to the opposite side of our figure and see, hmm, well, the height of this is labeled two inches. And I know four minus two equals two. So I can go ahead and label the part that I was missing so that I don't get confused. Similarly, I know that this whole thing is 10, but I don't know what this measurement is. Again, I'm gonna look to the opposite side and see that there's three inches over here. I know 10 minus three equals seven inches and I have found my missing value again. 
So now we are going to find the volume of this figure. If we do it just like we did here with our concrete representation, I can label this figure A and label this figure B. Figure A's volume is going to be two times three. We need to find out how far back it goes. I'm gonna go over here and find it's three. So three times three is nine, times two is 18 inches this time. Now, if I look at figure B, I know that it's the base is 10 by three, and my height is two. 10 times three is 30, times two is 60 inches. Now again, I will get 18 plus 60 equals 78 inches cubed. So we got the same answer in the same way as when we were using concrete. Now let's see if this changes when we divide up our figure into a different, um, in a different way. So now I'm going to try my other way and separate it here. I can keep my seven over here because I already um, solved for that. And now I don't really need to think about the two because I know the whole height of that is four. So if I look at figure A and figure B, figure A I'm seeing has a height of four inches. It has a width of three inches. And then I need to know how far back it goes. Again, I can just look right over here in the opposite side and see that it's three inches. So if I'm thinking about the base, the base is going to be three by three, which gives me nine. And nine times four is 36. Now let's move on to figure B. Even though the 10 is right here, I'm not gonna let that distract me because I know that's the length of the entire object. I'm gonna go up here and see that I know the length of just B is seven. And I know it extends back three inches. That gives me a base of 21 inches cubed. And then I know it has a height of two inches. 21 times two is going to give me 42 inches cubed. So now I have figure B is 42 and figure A is 36. Let's add those up and see if we get the same answer. Six plus two is eight, three plus four is 78. So again, we still get 78 inches cubed, which is what we should be getting because it's the same as what we did over here. So that's two different ways you can separate a composite volume figure, and you should get the same answer no matter how you separate them um, because you're not changing the figure, you're just changing the way that you're solving for the composite volume. All right, thank you.